you know this video is going to be good when it took me three months to make. Of course, about nine tenths of that time I spent doing completely nothing related to this machine, but nonetheless, I introduce you to Hot and Bothered. Yes, that is what I'm calling this machine. You can shut up. As you can see, it's extruding PLA. Now there is a bunch of things that need improvement and I will work on those next video because one, you do not have the attention span to watch a 30 minute video and two, I still haven't done it. Let me catch you up. So it all started with a dumb idea, a cheap idea. The idea is a hot glue gun and sticking plastic into it. So what did I learn? Well, $20 and an hour of my time was wasted. So I moved on to another idea, which was using plumbing items. I started with black pipe. My idea went something like this. Yeah. All right, let's go get it. Now the issue arose when it took 10 minutes to reach 70 Celsius. And if you know nothing about 3D printing, PLA starts to melt around 180C. So I had to research more into the heat conductivity, ugh, I can't even say that, heat conductivity, and realized I wasted another 20 bucks because steel is fucking shit. I do not know how I didn't think of copper piping, but once I got it, let's just say copper performed exactly how I needed it to. Also, I found an auger bit that fits inside of the pipe with about 16th of an inch of room, which is pretty good of a tolerance. After solving my melting problems, I had to figure out how to set up the machine steadily so it would not have any mounting problems. I found these aluminum rails and brackets that I traced out and cut half a circle for the pipe to sit into and what held the pipe to the brackets, or sorry, what held the pipe to the rails was host clamps. After testing this design, an issue I was worried about arose, which was insulation. It was a problem because it affected the efficiency of my machine and the safety. Well, safety is because heat transferred so well to the aluminum rails that it was too hot for me to touch. Now, I tested out an aerogel fiberglass insulation. It did exceptionally well with the insulation portion. The only issue was mounting. The thick insulation caused alignment issues with the cutout brackets. So I had to find another option, which is where I stumbled upon high temp resin. And holy shit is this stuff, the stuff. So I made PLA molds, big mistake. I should have 3D printed the parts and put them into a rubber mold like I did in, with a funnel coupler. You'll see this towards the end. Live and learn, I guess. And my type of learning is spending three hours removing plastic off two resin parts. <sighs> After the first test, I noticed heat climbed up to the auger coupler, which deformed it and made it useless. So again, I had to make a mold for the coupler and make a resin part. Now, I haven't fully tested this resin, but I noticed when it reached around 200 Celsius, it became soft. That's when I decided to get my coupler CNC machined and avoid any issues, which would arise. But don't you, don't you worry. I researched the resin softening part when it was heated and found an article from KS Resin and they talked about something called glass transition. And it's exactly what's happening in my resin. Now the article says a higher curing temperature would help or just having a higher rating that the resin was designed to you know handle and uh, I guess I could have cured it at around 80 celsius. After heating up the machine for an hour I noticed another flaw which is the funnel deforms at around the pipe because of the heat. So I designed a coupler and that's where I finally used rubber molding and casted the resin and cured it at 80 celsius. As of right now, I haven't had any issues with that coupler, so 80 Celsius seems to be the trick. So that's where I kind of leave off now. There's a couple of things that I gotta work on now, and those are heating element and motor speed control, filament thickness tester, and the spool winder. I'll give you a hint. I'll use PWM to control the heating element and the motor speed, 
and I will use a spring-loaded gauge that I'll have to design and figure out how to electronically gauge, I guess. Uh, that part is still a little foggy, but I'll figure it out. And light-dependent resistors. I don't really know how to explain them, but I'll use them in a way to control the spool winder. So, uh, yeah, the first part is kind of simpler, but not simple because there's still a bunch of circuit things that I got to do. So uh, I'll see you in the next one, which will probably be six months from now. <laughs> Don't worry, I'll be making more videos in between that. See ya.